Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, we are covering <laughs> Practical Magic, and I will ignore the chaos that <laughs> just occurred right before <laughs> I started speaking. Um, and before we go into the review, um, I do want to just let everyone know that there is a trigger warning for this episode. Um, just be warned that this movie contains an alcoholic boyfriend that physically abuses one of the characters. But let's go ahead and grab our cups and talk about tea. I am, I had to do a repeat because I hadn't finished my tea from the previous episode, Hocus Pocus. Um, (laughs) I am drinking the (laughs) Republic of Tea, the Crown Collection Tea, it is specifically the Queen's Afternoon Tea. It's got premium black tea. I love how they have to say premium black tea. <laughs> See, blackberry leaves and natural honey and vanilla flavors. And th- this is the tin if anyone's curious. <laughs> Even though it will be review- uh, reversed, but you, you get the idea. And I am continuing to drink my cup of Bigelow's Medley Mint. Or mint medley, herbal tea. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> okay. And it has peppermint leaves, spearmint leaves, rose hips, lemon peel, and hibiscus. Yay. And, and I'm using a merch mug. Well, yay. I, I'm i not. I'm using a Totoro mug. How oh dare. It's Totoro. It gives me, makes me happy. But thank you so much to the Republic of Tea for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our tea sippers out there, bring yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So, Practical Magic is about two witch sisters raised by their eccentric aunts in a small town face closed, uh, and they face close-minded prejudice and a curse which threatens to prevent them ever finding lasting love. Essentially, if they like find someone that they love then uh, and get together with them, then they the person dies. The man that falls in love with them yeah. dies. Well, it's, yeah, yeah. If it's unrequited, like they love someone, but they don't love them back, then they're fine. <laughs> So specifically, well, okay, is that when they love each other and they get together? Or, like, what if they love each other, but they don't, like, pursue a relationship? Unclear. Um, The curse came about because of Maria's, their ancestors' broken heart from Jilted Lover. So I think it targeted specifically men that loved... The women in their family. Yeah. I have to also wonder... Oh, cry, credit to IMDB, by the way, for the, the yes. summary. But I also have to wonder, that makes me uh, think... I'm like, the logic here. What if it was another woman that loved one of the sisters, and the one of the sisters loved her back? It's well, like, that actually comes into play. Because the the pure unconditional love of the sisters and it's not like romantic love obviously but it's it's actual like family familial unconditional acceptance and love that ends up breaking the curse altogether like it went back in time but i am referring to like a woman romantically i know know. yeah it never came up yep so we don't know we don't know (laughs) but anyways (laughs) So for entertainment, uh, I remember Jess had showed me this movie one other time, and uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was when we first took notes on it. 
No, like uh, I'm saying like before we watched it for the podcast, I'm pretty sure you showed it to me one other time because I know I didn't watch it on my own. Uh, yeah, I think what happened it, it was just one of those times that we're hanging out. And you found out I hadn't ever watched Practical Magic, and you're like, you need to watch it. Yeah. But anyways, but I'm I'm about ninety six percent sure that we watched it for the podcast. But I but what I'm saying is I watched it with you before then, like it was several years ago. But you showed me the movie before the podcast for the before. I don't think so, but I don't know. Anyway. Because I recognize what happened in the movie, but right. yeah. Anyways. Uh, this is what happens when you're friends for too long. You remember. <laughs> you can't remember anything. Anyway. Entertainment. It all runs together. It's fine. Yep. Uh, I. Uh, so this movie was, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Um, I never grew up with this movie. I never watched this on my own. It was only with Jess. So, um, but I am kind of sad that I was not exposed to this earlier in my life. But this <laughs> is a pretty good movie. So I would rate it a seven point five. I love the way that they portrayed the two sisters and the connection of the family. It's like it makes total sense that with the town misunderstanding them. Um, that the family would have such a strong bond because it's literally all they have. Um, and I like the fact that the characters are intelligent and they don't go falling through the plot like some like other romance movies do. Uh, like for example, like the example is like Sally telling Gary, uh, which is the detective, that she wants to know uh, what they have is actually real rather than like a spell it's not like she instantly is like oh you love me that's you know it's like she's very skeptical like i'm not sure about this like you know we need to make sure that this is genuine when she realizes that he was part of the spell she's like ah crap Mm -hmm. (laughs) take a step back yeah (laughs) and then um the acting naturally was great especially the the kid actors were really impressive as well like like no matter what age of character that they showed both of them felt genuine to the character that they were portraying uh, like it, it really it felt like a true like flashback or or whatever yeah the casting was great yeah really good and I do like the chemistry between Gary and Sal- uh, Sally. Sally. Um, but I will say that it did feel a bit rushed. Mm-hmm. Um, now, to be fair, they and they even explained this, that a lot of the chemistry he had for her was off screen because it was based off of the letter that he had seen. Uh, or it was it was the letter that motivated him to see her, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's and it's difficult because I can't really think of any good place that they could have cut or shortened to expand on their chemistry. All the scenes were very well placed and it really wouldn't make sense to lengthen the movie because it's already an hour and 44 minutes. So it's really difficult for me to think of a way that they could have expanded on the chemistry. Um, so it's like the movie was like pretty spot on except for that little bit. But like I said, I can't think of any alternative way that they could have cut to add more chemistry. And it really, I mean, the movie didn't feel an hour and 44 minutes long. It really but doesn't. It goes by really fast. But I, I definitely don't think it necessarily justifies them lengthening it to like two hours or more just mm-hmm. to like expand on the chemistry so that that's my my one nitpick uh, but like I said it's a very small nitpick because it's like even like trying to think through it, I'm like I don't know how they would fix it but I think they should <laughs> uh, yeah, the only thing I can think of is if they lengthened it just a little bit mm-hmm. but I don't know really what else they would add necessarily yeah exactly uh, but I love that they made the boyfriend so evil because it does force the sisters into a position where they didn't have much choice, but it also kept them 
the sister's sympathetic despite the fact that they committed murder like that that balance there because you can easily make a a good character suddenly be less likable by having them do such a drastic act like that well and the fact that the the initial time at least was completely accidental yeah like she just wanted him to fall asleep (laughs) Mm mm-hmm yeah um so. But and the, I mean, there's there's movies, specifically horror movies. I'm thinking of, but I'm sure there's uh, other cases where it's like a character will accidentally kill off another character, and it just immediately turns you off on yeah. how like likable that is. So I I think they were very clever in how they portrayed so carefully the sisters versus the boyfriend. So you're like, oh, it's like, I know what they did was a bad thing, but that asshole, like, totally deserved it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like, like you know, he, like he, he was going, <laughs> yeah, it's like he was going to kill them if they didn't kill him type of thing. Yeah. Um, he had it coming, 100%. <laughs> yeah. But overall, I think it's a really fun movie. It has a nice mixture of romance, comedy, supernatural, and heartwarming moments. Um uh, not maybe not a lot of people know this about me yet, but I am not into romantic comedies whatsoever. And so showing me any sort of movie where there's like a romance is always like uh, a, a very uh, touchy thing because I you just won't know if I'll like it or not. Um, but in this case, like there's just so much depth to the movie besides like the romance. Uh, I mean. It's like it's a it's an integral part of the plot, but at the same time, it's not like they're like shoving it down your throat. Well, it it kind of is important to the story, but it's not the main portion. It's more of yeah. a side arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he's he's not even the reason why they were able to fully banish him anyway mm-hmm. in the end. Like, he was the reason they didn't go to jail. But <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, definitely, if you don't like romantic comedies like me, uh, give this movie a try. Maybe, maybe you'll like it. But that's all I got for entertainment. I forgot. Did you say your rating? 7.5. Okay. <laughs> I You could have said it and I could have just missed it. Um, I said it in the very is, beginning. So my brain is working right now, <laughs> but um, and I am fully aware that nostalgia glasses played a bit of a role in my rating. But I did watch this movie when it came out, and I've watched it basically every year since, usually multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> so I give it an eight point seven five. Ooh. I absolutely adore this movie. I love this movie. It's great. The ants are so fun. (laughs) And they kind of make you wish that you had a couple of ants like that in your family. Or at least they did for me. (laughs) I mean, I love my huge family and they're all crazy. But this is like a different kind of crazy. Yeah. And it's just, it's great to watch. You see the closeness because that is their community. They're shunned mostly from the rest of the community. It's surprising they didn't just leave. But, (laughs) which you see some of the hypocritical people in the community coming to them for spells and things. The very things that they shun them for. Mm So... (laughs) Which is interesting, and I'm glad that they leave bits like that in the movie so that you can see that. Um, I I love the relationship between the sisters and how close they are. And the little snippets of Sally's family when, when her husband was alive. And the joy there, like they show so much of their life in just little snippets. And mm-hmm. you can really see how much they loved each other. Yeah. How much they love their family. 
and how close they were and just how devastated she is when he does pass. Yeah. So they did a really good job with that. Um, I love the differences between the personalities of all the characters. Yeah. Even a lot of the side characters that you only see little bits of, they're very, they're very, in, very much individuals. Yeah. They're it's like not, they're distinct, but realistic. Yes, exactly. And so they don't all run together. They're all very distinct and separate. So you can still tell them apart, <laughs> which is a complaint that we often have with a lot of other movies is mm -hmm. that I don't know which character is which because they're basically the same and interchangeable. Yes, and is actually a bunch of individuals. So it's nice to see that. Um, I love that they state very explicitly in the movie, there is no devil in the craft. <laughs> like what they do is, yeah, they have some spells and things, but it's nature and herb based, basically. There is some magic, sure, but it's. It has nothing to do with religion or Satan or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in another scene, um, one of the side characters says, you know, yeah, sure, you get your your outliers out there, the devil worshippers, the um, the animal sacrifices and all, but that's extremely rare. <laughs> like, she's nothing like that. <laughs> None of it has even come close. <laughs> so they they very much separate that. And I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, it is a funny movie in many scenes, but they don't overload it with mm -hmm. comedy. Yeah. It still has some darker tones to it, especially with the, yeah. the crazy boyfriend, <laughs> Jimmy. Or James. Um, Angelov, he is. Whew, there's some serious red flags there. Yeah. That she really should have seen before then, but she was so wrapped up in lust <laughs> that uh, <laughs> found out a bit too late there. <laughs> but it's. They have those darker tones, but they still bring some some levity to it with their comedy. Mm -hmm. And most of their reactions to things and the way they speak to each other, their interactions are very genuine and feel organic. So it doesn't feel yeah. forced for the most part. I say yeah. for the most part because I also, while I do love this movie, <laughs> the relationship between Sally and Gary does feel a little bit rushed. And they do explain a lot of that, like you said, with the letter. He said he was read it. It must have been a thousand times. So he felt like he knew her. Plus him going around the town talking to everyone about their family and hearing all these different things about them. He gets a more complete picture, at least from an outsider's perspective, mm -hmm. of who she is and who her family are. Yeah. And where she's coming from. So I I see that you know some of it was obviously the the spell but i think it was more the initial push and that was about it yeah but i do also absolutely love that when she realizes that he fits basically every check mark for that spell that she did as a child she's like wait a minute <laughs> we need to back up <laughs> because we don't know if it's real if we continue like this, mm -hmm. you won't know if it's just because I don't want to go to prison. And I won't know if it's because of the spell I did when I was small. So <laughs> let's not, shall we, <laughs> for the time being. And I also love that Gary was not the savior. Like he didn't come in. He wasn't the white knight. He didn't come in and fix everything. He mm -hmm. fixed some things, which admittedly, extremely helpful. It was nice that they didn't have to go to prison <laughs> for manslaughter or second degree murder, arguably. But, <laughs> but 
but he wasn't the overall hero of yeah. the story. Mm -hmm. He didn't solve everything for them. Yeah. He didn't even actually fully take care of Jimmy like they initially thought. Mm -hmm. Once he left, they were like, oh, shit, this is still a thing. <laughs> we still have a problem. <laughs> and the women solved it themselves. Mm hmm which was fairly rare for a movie in the 90s. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. And it's refreshing and it's nice. Yeah, like, like honestly, this is, at least to me, a near perfect movie. Like, I have, it's been a long time since I've seen a movie that I can, like, bear, that I'm basically nitpicking. To be yeah. able to, like, scrape something from it. Like, the only reason why I rated it what I did is because it's not really my type of movie. But if it was type of my type of movie, I could totally see it being, a, you know, an 8 or even a 9. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah. But, yeah. I like I do. I, and, and, again, I love that the, the romance arc... Mm -hmm. Is just a kind of a side note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's mostly about the sisters and their bond. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's honestly yeah. a very refreshing movie. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And they don't beat you over the head with it, So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, they, they know, it's like, they know just how much to give you. Yes. Um, minus the not enough chemistry, but. It's like that that's arguable since they are like, yeah. you know, there was chemistry, but it's just off screen and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So and because it was off screen that left us more time to focus on the actual main arc. Mm -hmm. So it was it's a nice balance there. Um I do agree that it would have been nice if they showed just a little bit more of their relationship developing instead of it being yeah. very sudden <laughs> yeah. feeling. Yeah. But um, like you said, I, I don't really know how they would really add to that. Yeah. And especially did. in the nineties, I know they were pretty scared to have a movie that was too long. Yeah. That was over two hours, like an hour and 44 minutes was like a long movie back yeah. then. Uh, and, and then again, Lord of the Rings came out. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely changed everyone's mind yeah. and proved that, oh, we will, we can and will as an audience sit for that long, depending on the story itself. So, yeah like the the only movies i remember in the 90s that were like longer than two hours were like ones based off of uh true stories like braveheart braveheart i think was over two hours i mean it's I been a long so. time since i watched it but as i I've i remember bits and pieces of that one um oh man that one gave me childhood trauma <laughs> i believe it <laughs> but anyways <laughs> That and Last of the Mohicans. I've only seen bits and pieces of that one, but hmm. I hear a lot of people say that gave them all the trauma as well. That one, uh, I was old enough that that didn't bother me as much. But yeah, at like either five or six, I watched my parents showed me Braveheart and especially the beginning scene where there's bodies hanging off of the ceiling. I, I was messed up for a while. <laughs> Well, you are a very sensitive child, anyway. Yeah, yes, I, yeah. <laughs> I was not ready, but it is also around that same uh, age that I was shown Mars Attack, which also gave me lasting trauma. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, childhood. <laughs> I still don't quite understand how that particular movie gave they you they get trauma, lasered but... into skeletons how is that not scary and it's silly and, and it's they're funny but they look terrifying <sighs> they were lime green <laughs> and bright red well, and, well the aliens they were, were also terrifying because it's like it's just a brain and like the bulgy like beady eyes hilarious and stupid oh anyways <laughs> Are we, are we ready to move there are on two to kinds realism? of people <laughs> <laughs> yes we're ready for realism <laughs> oh so 
so <laughs> this movie is uh yeah comment below on what your childhood trauma movies were <laughs> but anyways um arachnophobia <laughs> yeah that Poltergeist. yeah yeah um so for realism this one's a tough one uh so i ended up putting a three but now i almost kind of wonder if it deserves more like a four i don't know okay i'm going to go through all of my points and if i change my mind i will then revise my rating but the reason why at the time i did it uh put a three is um I, this is kind of a mixture, but anyways, so, um, the, the mother trying to prevent her kids from going through the same trauma as her being an outcast, I feel like it's pretty realistic. Um, and then also her, or Sally to, to be specific, uh, mm -hmm. going through the depressive phase after her husband died, like definitely very realistic of like how bedridden she was and how like useless she was in everyday tasks, like totally understandable. She was definitely going through the, the grieving process hard. Uh, I love that you could see the different stages of grief. Yeah. Yeah, like the details. So those those two things were definitely pretty realistic. The one thing that I was a little bit confused about is why would Sally's letter be relevant to the detective? It it just it wasn't. That's that's part of the spell. That's where that came in. Okay, but so um... the only thing it would have given him would have been an address. For yeah. where the sister might be. If he couldn't find her. Yeah. So it's like. Putting magic aside. the <laughs> That kind of like. Loses footing. But as you said it's explained through the spell. And then. Another thing that I didn't find so realistic. Is that the detective. Not arresting Sally. For practically confessing. To murder. He's just like. He's like, you know, you should get a lawyer. You shouldn't tell me anything. But that, but she tells him anyway that he's just like, eh. But it's like, yeah, he was attracted to her, but his duty would seem like it would be more of a priority. And that's the one thing that made it difficult to me about Gary's character is that he really seemed to either just uh, ignore his duties as a detective and just follow his heart. But it's like, he did seem like he was a decent enough to, t I don't know. It's confusing. Cause on the one hand, they make him seem like he is dedicated to his job and he wants to be a good detective. But then on the other hand, that could be the spell. But on the other hand, it seemed like he was avoiding some very important duties for the fact that he like likes her. Um, and then the, the women of the town so quickly turning to the witch's side when there had been decades of fear, you'd think that they would be at least a number of them that would still be too afraid. Um, it's like, I can see a few that were on the fence about being afraid and then coming to their side or coming out of curiosity. But the ones that were like die hard, like we're terrified of you. I can't really picture them being like, oh, yeah, let's let's go help and do spells and stuff. You know, it's like even if they weren't afraid of the women themselves, they'd be afraid of like the quote unquote, like Satanistic part, even though I know they said that it's not part of Satan. It's like in their mind, they probably are associating it with like evil, with Satan, with, you know, all of these negative things. Uh, so it's like even if. They're like, okay, the women might be okay, but they're still doing things that I'm afraid of. I, I can't really see them turning so quickly. Um, and then Gary, the detective planting the ring with the ashes and claimed that the lab confirmed it to be the boyfriend's. 
it's like I don't know how much sense it makes that the lab wouldn't be able to see the DNA didn't match. Like that. So with that, they said um, jewelry in the ashes of the structure. So they didn't necessarily find a body. I had to to really listen to to that part over again to see what she actually read. Okay. Uh, but it does, I don't know. It was a little bit out there. It was a little there. sus. Yeah. yeah. It was a little too neatly wrapped up, I'll admit. Yeah. But I will say, even talking through my points, I'm like, okay, I, I think a three was maybe a little bit too harsh. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and raise it up to a four. I think that, I mean, it's like there there's bits and parts in the realistic part that you're like, I don't think that th that would happen or or if it did happen I don't think it exactly happened like that um, but overall like pretty pretty like we said this is a pretty solid movie it's hard to it pick a lot <laughs> apart so yep it definitely is I had to nitpick as well honestly because it for the most part is a fairly realistic movie mm -hmm. um, I give it a 3.5 okay so I split the difference <laughs> because I too was going back and forth between the two there for a while. Um, but again, with the nitpicky things like the blood was too bright on their hand cuts toward the beginning. Um, the truck driver that hit the husband, you can't tell me he didn't see him. Yes. There was just a wave of bicycles. He had been walking into the road right before the giant group of cyclists went through. And right after the cyclists go through, the truck barrels through that intersection? No. Yeah. No. Uh-uh. Yep. Um, the amount of liquor in the bottle keeps changing <laughs> from scene to scene. Good eye. <laughs> Consistency. Um, uh. I I do appreciate the super toxic or unhealthy relationship that they portray between Jimmy and, and Jillian. Yeah, that's definitely um, pretty realistic. That was fairly, fairly accurate and realistic and definitely terrifying in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. But that's... That's pretty realistic, and I'm glad that she was able to at least try to get out when she did. I feel like she should have tried to get out sooner, but it happens so, so often that people stay, and not just women, people stay yeah. in toxic, unhealthy relationships a lot longer than really they should, either because they don't see it right away or they have some other issues that they're going through that make it difficult for them to get out of the relationship just mentally, emotionally, or because of other outside things going on. It's harder for them to distance themselves from that relationship. Well, so, and then also I think something mm -hmm. that isn't brought up a lot is uh, often with toxic or abusive relationships it's not like if it if a relationship was a hundred percent bad no one would stay in that relationship but it's like oftentimes like in her case where mm -hmm. like the sex was good it's like there there's things that you think back on and you're like oh that was like you know such a good time or or whatever and it makes you feel connected to that person yeah. so it makes it a lot harder to disconnect well, yeah, like you said, they wouldn't have been in that relationship to begin with if it was 100% bad yeah. from the get-go. Yeah. So... It's like he reeled her in, and then... Yeah. 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 The red flags were there, but she was so blinded by lust that um, she was having a really good time and didn't see them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that <laughs> um, so we were talking um, I'm curious to get like a lawyer's perspective on how they would actually be charged hmm. the sisters mm -hmm. this is more of a side note honestly but 
Um, we were talking when we were watching and taking notes on the movie. Like, there's a case for self-defense. They even say in there, like, we have to go to the police. It was self-defense. And then Jillian's like, I've been giving him this stuff for a while. <laughs> Slowly poisoning him, basically, <laughs> is not self-defense. <laughs> Yeah, but a lot of people use this like she states later in the movie, Sally does, that a lot of people use belladonna for sedatives and they put it in their tea to help them sleep. So if there was a case for that, they could argue that he was basically an insomniac. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely feel like it would be a very messy it would case. be very 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 messy like um, i feel like it would depend on the prosecution and how they twisted it it also would have depended on how long they waited i feel like yes the fact to that they the authorities. exactly because once they went from you know trying to revive him in the car because she was trying to revive him in the back seat um, once they went from that to let's go back to my house, which is several miles away still in another state, it sounded like, because she took a flight to where Jillian was initially, then, yeah, that moves to second degree murder at that point, I'm pretty yeah. sure, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is not premeditated, but at the same time, it's still murder. <laughs> it's still murder. And um intentional or not it, it may be manslaughter yeah maybe. i could also see manslaughter it really depends but then they hid the body yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah there's so many different charges and i'd be curious to know from a lawyer's perspective <laughs> what all they would be facing yeah, like I can definitely I feel like the the nice little wrap up at the end is kind of like a no. Yeah, like I can definitely see, you know, if they turn themselves in as soon as possible or or called the police and had the police decide mm -hmm. um I could totally see it being a lot more likely for them to be able to get off uh the charges and uh cuz they'd be able to explain the way the belladonna and and all of that. But yeah, the well, fact that they were them at gunpoint mm -hmm. and was threatening to burn one of the sisters at one point, like yeah. brand her with his ring. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. if they had gone to the police initially <laughs> and it sounded like he was wanted for murder somewhere else as well, multiple times. So they probably would have been able to get away with, you know, almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, because they could have been like, oh, yeah, he takes uh, Belladonna to sleep. So we had it yeah. with us. And so we sl uh, we snuck some to him, hoping he'll go to sleep. And then we accidentally gave him too much. Like, that would be an easy way to explain why he would yes. have had. Yeah extremely ah, yeah it's like they just made it worse for themselves <laughs> they really did uh, and panic will do that <laughs> yeah but i get it um but that was kind of a side note but also still tied into the the nice little neat ending in a bow um I was wondering when the ants found the bottle on the porch, if that was the same bottle that they poisoned him with. How is mm. it nearly full? And also, wouldn't they all have been poisoned with the belladonna? Hmm. The bottle of tequila. Yeah. <laughs> and if it was a new bottle... What kind of supernatural bullshit powers does he have to be able to conjure a whole damn bottle of tequila? Oh man. And place it on their porch. Plot hole. A little bit. <laughs> um 
I am also impressed that they got the grass to look like that over the grave after it was, you know, freshly dug and raining. Like, you look out the next day, I know they're magic, but at the same time, <laughs> it looks completely fresh. Like, nice, beautiful, well-cared-for lawn. Mm-hmm. And it was just the roses that were starting to come up in it. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, so with the letter, again, Officer Hallett, Gary would not have been able to get any evidence off of Sally's letter. He did stay silent. Like, he didn't say anything in the the movie, mm-hmm. which... You know, he knows there was nothing that he got from her letter apart from her address. Like, a possible location for the sister. That was it. So, but it was, it's also um, against the law to open and read someone else's mail without permission. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the police can only do, yeah, that, it, yeah, I uh-huh. think they'd have to have a warrant. Yes. Would have been inadmissible in court even if it did contain evidence and anything that they had gotten from after that because of the letter would have been fruit of the poison tree and would have been inadmissible as well oh <laughs> i know there are like loopholes and things but i was i fell down a rabbit hole <laughs> and in this situation there's no reason whatsoever for him to have opened the letter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know like listening to a lot of um, crime podcasts and stuff like that, like there's this one that I watch where it's actually hosted by a former detective and a former New York prosecutor. And they say, say they explain over and over how careful they try and be yes. to. They have to. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's they like. They have to be. What the, what the, yeah, because of the worst case scenario for them is if they uh, arrest someone that all evidence points to them being the murderer and then they get loose because of some like stupid, like lousy, yeah, yeah. Or mishandling of evidence or evidence thrown out. Yeah, because at that point in time, if they're pretty sure that that was a person, then they just let a murderer back out into the streets yeah Yeah. they have to be insanely careful with that kind of thing yeah so no um but to hit on one of your points with the the phone tree thing phone with that many women showing up to Uh, help oh oh yes so there were a lot more women in that classroom when they were deciding the phone tree than what showed up so not everyone did show up okay she actually two of them were her co-workers the people that she hired yeah for her botanical shop yeah so that helped boost the numbers a little bit but the other women were the more sympathetic and curious ones that wanted to help mm-hmm. they heard her out for once and they decided to help so, not everyone did. Okay. Which makes it okay. a bit more realistic. Yeah, that that helps. That helps. <laughs> but there there were several that showed up and I think a lot of it had to do with the curiosity, but also she had never really done anything. Like she was always the one that was trying to act normal. Mm-hmm. So for her to call and be like, "Hey, my sister needs help." There's a guy that will not leave her alone. It was a really bad relationship. He hit her and he will not leave her alone now. (laughs) I think that also helped. Yeah. Yeah. So the women were sympathetic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's why I gave it a (laughs) 3.5. There are some things that fairly realistic especially the interactions between a lot of the the characters. 
but there are other things again had to be a little nitpicky on some of it but still consistency is key <laughs> that just fell a little short yeah but those generally don't detract from the movie mm -hmm. at least in my opinion mm -hmm. so i love this movie yeah <laughs> take it L as you will <laughs> Yeah, like like overall to be, it's a fun, interesting twist of like a romantic movie because it doesn't like a hundred percent focus on the romance. Um, and I did check, and it is PG thirteen, so I think it mm -hmm. would be a decent family film if you have like older kids. Um, that scene where they almost stick the needles in the eyes. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I love her reaction though. When she freaks out and backs off is like ah. <laughs> yeah. But so. uh but even as like not a huge rom com fan, this is one that I'll definitely be coming back to in the future. Um uh, and you know, like we said, it's not like it's like yeah, it it is a focus in the movie, but it's not like a hundred it's not the main point yeah yeah so but yeah well thank you so much for joining us today and please comment on what you thought of the movie if you'd like to recommend a movie game or tea and keep up to date with our content you can find us on youtube twitter instagram facebook tiktok discord and most places you listen to podcasts and if you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. We also have a Teespring and a PayPal donate button if you'd like to support us monetarily. And our Republic of Tea affiliate link will also be linked down below. It does not affect the price of the tea. It just helps us to continue to do what we love. And you can find all of the sites mentioned linked down below. And until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.